because we are way over time. We should have started like 15 seconds ago. Uh, they're uh -oh. gonna, affiliates are going to kill us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome start, back start to... Uh, we can go even later. Uh, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to your Liberty Radio on a Thursday night. Uh, it is the day after uh, the birthday that, that we celebrate the American police state on. Uh, so I guess not as special, but it's September 12th. Briar Rose is officially one year old today, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, officially a beast now. Uh, and we're back on Thursday night. Well, you know, I, I did something very special to celebrate um, September the 11th. What was that? I dressed up my five kids as Israelis, and we all danced to celebrate the successful completion of the event. Please tell me you did it in public. <laughs> of course. And filmed it. <laughs> yes, there is film. Nice. But it's the most fitting celebration, I think. I expect all five of my children to be deported to Tel Aviv in about two to three days. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, there'll be no charges. We wouldn't want to embarrass our ally, as LVJ said when he recalled the seventh fleet from, you know, going to rescue the USS Liberty. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways. Was that was that in September as well? Uh that was in June. Okay. When when the uh, Liberty incident happened. I was actually I, I like how it's um euphemized as the USS Liberty incident. Right. Rather than it being just an attack. I was actually surprised that well, it wasn't a deliberate something didn't attack. happen yesterday. It was just right. an incident. Yeah. Well, I, I was surprised we didn't have an incident yesterday. I thought Biden was uh, threatening us on Tuesday when he said, I'm doing 9-11 tomorrow. Like, what the fuck yeah. does that mean? And, you know, there was a lot of kids that didn't go to school. There was a lot of threats called into schools yesterday, too. Really? I hadn't heard that. Well, I, I must say, uh, I, I think it was Monday night, maybe. Uh, Blunt Force Wisdom. Yeah. Where... Uh, Teal and Steve and um, uh, Sugar Tits and all of them were talking about Haiti and um, right. the story and about was the lady all up in her like, ripping the head off a cat and eating it. and Which, that was actually in Ohio. Way to go, Ohio. Ohio, where there's more to discover. In the heart right. of the Springfield, home. which is about how far away from you. Um, what part of Ohio was she in? Who? The cat eating lady. Oh, I think that was up by like Cleveland. That was Cleveland. Yeah, and that I thought that was in in Springfield. And I'm in the. I know there was. I'm, uh, I'm at the I, southern I heard it. point. Yeah, I heard it today. I want to say it was on the No Agenda show. Uh, it was actually the audio of a police call where the the officer was responding to um uh, a migrant eating a cat like just out on the street and and you hear the officer walk up to the person and be like did you kill that cat yeah that's her yeah yeah that was in springfield allegedly yeah yeah right so so after hearing all of that and then um, they played on the show that mo this past Monday night, they played on the show, a clip of like, uh, the, uh, the Springfield city hall meeting or board of aldermen or, Oh yeah. Whatever. With all the, the people well, the, getting the up town and speaking. fathers, we yeah. shall say, although it was more like the town mothers, but, right. um, like the, the meth goblin grandma and, and yeah, all them and yeah. when the guy started saying, hey, our, our city is being overrun by immigrants and what are you going to do about it? And the lady speaks up and says, well, this is turning very racist. So I'm adjourning this 
city meeting right now. Who and was just making it racist? It. And, they all, and all the town mothers and fathers just got up and walked out while there was a line of people waiting to talk. And well, so much for your um, fake democracy. Anyways. Right. But who was making it racist? Well, the numbers and the facts he was talking about were racist. Oh, they were racist. Yeah. Because they were talking about what? People with dark colored skin? Yeah. And As so, you know, people with a light colored skin. After or something? seeing the clips and hearing the discussion and the, the heated emotions and everything, I thought, you know, I, I work all over the place. You know, I'm, I work Cincinnati. I've worked Columbus a bunch lately. You know, I, I go wherever the money is. And I thought, well, fuck, you know, Springfield's just down the road. Let me. And I speak French, and Ayesian is just basically French Creole. You know, I, I can understand most of it. I mean, when we were uh, coming, I think it was on the way back from the Third Eye Carnival when uh, the Drizzle and the Yona encountered busloads full mm -hmm. of um, Haitians at the uh, truck stop on, uh, maybe that was on the Indian Nations toll road. I think I it might have been. I know we were in Oklahoma. I remember that. And I, I, uh, I dropped it in the, the toll road. Yeah, I, I dropped it in the AM wake up chat this morning. It. Yeah, Steve was like, how, how do you know that they were Haitians? And I was like, well, Yona went and, and talked to them. Yeah, and they were speaking the, the Haitian French, not Canadian French and not French French, because I've been to both of them places, and that's different French, very different. So It's just basically a much more crude form of French where they often don't, Right. Conjugate verbs, and you know it's mixed in with uh, Taino and Ayati, the original indigenous languages. A lot of the, the nouns that they use, and a couple of verbs. And right, um, you know, it, it's a strong accent. But other than that, I mean, if if you speak French, you're going to understand about eighty percent of Haitian right off the bat. And then once you get the accent, uh, maybe about 90%. But to understand 100% of it, you're going to have to, you know, start making word lists of what the fuck does this word mean? Because it ain't French. And what the fuck does that word mean? Because that ain't French either. But that's what makes it Haitian Creole because it's so, not pure French. So what what did the, when you actually got a chance to, to talk with a couple of the fellas, what were they what were they telling you uh well they said they had jobs jobs yeah like like they were going to work i was thinking it was up in omaha nebraska huh which i thought was weird like a little why bit the fuck would you go to omaha unless you're like you know child trafficking the boys town or child trafficking, uh, fresh meat to Warren Buffett's sex parties or whatever, you know. And there's not much happening in Omaha other than apparently a bunch of butt stuff and pedo stuff and Warren From Buffett. What I hear. <laughs> yeah. all, all pretty much the same thing. Well, there's the, the one dude, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, just sold like half of his shares today. Yeah. For, I don't know, a couple hundred million bucks. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you picked up on that. I mean, I laid it off the backboard. I was hoping you'd at least, you know, do the tap in. Yeah, I'm still not... trying to figure out what's going on with that. And and good God, I did not well, know. You already saw the Oracle of Omaha bailed on Apple. Well, he bailed on Apple. He bailed on Bank of America. Now his well, vice chairman, his, stocks, his vice totally chairman just cut his, his own holdings of the company that he oversees in half. It's called a golden parachute. I suppose. You pull that rip cord and, and your ejection seat just shoots straight up out of the F-15. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of strange movement that's happening mm -hmm. in, uh, in the markets. 
I don't know if everybody is picking up on that or not, uh, but these are all signals that we should be paying attention to because these are large moves that are being made. They have effects that are not always immediate. Is it possible that the October surprise could be the economy taking the biggest shit in the bed we've ever seen? If it did, it would basically guarantee a Trump victory. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing, too. Trump, but Trump and Guy Liner Vance. Correct. But have you noticed that gas prices are dropping? Oh, yeah. They they drop like a full 40 cents here in the Piney Woods. It was oh, like I, first I, I of September. Gas, gas prices dropped. Like $2.74. Yeah. That's about what we're at here. Wow. Yeah. I want to say it's about like 280, 280, 290, something like that. It wasn't that long ago. It was like all around here in the tri state, it was like 350, 360 a gallon. Yeah. So Falling it's gas like prices the, the tend gas to price signal here Republican like victory. 50 or 60 cents. Yeah. But traditionally, if you if you look at gas prices leading up to an election, when the gas prices fall, a Republican wins. When the gas prices go up, a Democrat wins. Yeah. I've also noticed like literally every major fucking road all around the all the roads are being repaved and restriped. My God. Well, we are getting we are getting to that point in the year where they're starting to crunch the numbers and they're like, How much money do we have left? We gotta spend all of that shit. So so anyways, I got a little sidetracked there. Uh Monday night after yeah. watching clips of um Blunt Force Wisdom, um, and then I had to go back to work. Um, it was my week off. I will be back this Monday coming up with uh, episode 86 of the Peasants Podcast. Oh, wow. Which is now every two weeks. Much much more manageable schedule for me. That way I can grip harder in the meantime. Um, but uh, after seeing all that, I thought, you know what? I, I'm just going to I'll just go over and, and check out Springfield, work Springfield, you know, a couple hours and see what I encounter. You know, and sure enough, I had a pet smart delivery. I had some Dollar Generals and a couple of uh, restaurant orders. And I'll be goddamn if about half went to what I would consider as well-to-do or wealthy customers, all of them speaking exclusively in French, which is no problem. I spoke to them. Well, I use Yen, which is sort of French, French-ish. Um, it, it's like French, but less gay and more machete. Um, but anyways. Um, if you say so. Uh, and what struck me was, you know, I expected that it would, just be an overblown thing and that there would be you know like little pockets of just a few hundred Haitians here and there and yet maybe a couple of apartment blocks or government projects or something but no no man thousands and thousands and thousands like um it reminded me of that episode of south park when the people from the future come to Turk or Jarbs, right? And motherfuckers are everywhere. I mean, fucking everywhere. I mean, at the gas station at the fucking Burger King, at the fucking Save a Lot, at the fucking Pet Smart. And then the, the speaking of the Pet Smart, Pet Smart order was kind of weird. I mean, a barbecue mitten, a basting brush. But then a leash. But what, what am I missing here? What the fuck's going on, man? And yes, it went, and, and that did not go to a Haitian, by the way. That went to a redneck. So um, maybe he has a Haitian recipe. I don't know. Rednecks eat pussy too. Just saying, like. Might have Haitian friends. It's staggering. I, I'm going to call it the immigrant triangle between. 
uh, Columbus down to Cincinnati, up to Dayton, and back to Columbus. Everything in between. There's like easily a hundred thousand, easily over a hundred thousand immigrants that have just poured into that triangle around, like generally around Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and then all around Columbus and all around North Cincy and Hamilton and Butler County and all over fucking Dayton, Beaver Creek, Springfield. And I mean, when I say immigrants, it's not just tens upon tens of thousands of patients, but also Nepalis, like from Nepal and like, mm -hmm. uh, what was the one? Tajik? Tajik? Tajiks? Yeah. From Tajikistan? Right. Tajik. One of the stands. And and Uzbeks. Uzbeks. Uzbekis. Uzbekis. Becky, yeah. Becky, 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 Stan, Stan. Shout out to um, Herman Cain. <laughs> Rest in peace, pizza man. Anyways, um, Godfather's Pizza, right? Yeah. 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 I think so. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, man. You know, uh, so they re literally are all over the place in Springfield. What was strange was Springfield, Ohio hits just like North Pittsburgh. Harris Walls campaign signs in people's yards. That makes sense. Although, to be fair, obviously we've been over the whole thing of the poster board, life-size um, Trump poster board, Trump, uh, what I call the Trump crows, right? You know, keep, scare liberals off your, off your lawn. And it works. It's effective. Um, I have yet to see a poster board Kamala or a poster board poopy pants. Have yet to see any of those, although I did finally see some signs. And in Belmont, Kentucky, on Kentucky State Route 5, uh, somebody actually has a wobbly Bobby Kennedy sign. Shout out Chris Rancast. Inarguably the best Bobby Kennedy um, parody voice on the air today. He's got it. He's got it spot on. Trying to see if I can find anywhere. And isn't and apparently isn't it's not Wobbly easy. Bobby like uh, touching penises with Trump now? Like they did some public oh, appearance. Probably. They've probably done all kinds of gay shit. I mean, they've probably like done kinkier stuff when they were both at. Epstein's pedophile island together. Probably. I wouldn't be surprised. People forget. It, it, like amnesia is it seems to trend American when it comes to things. And you know, granted, um there's a lot of uh information that has has not really been promulgated when it comes to Epstein and, you know, we're still waiting on more um, data dumps. Although there, there has been a lot of data put out there. It's just not really been covered that much. Um, but anyway, Francine brought the, the moist back to the piney woods. Awesome. Like we're almost at a hundred percent humidity right now. It's fucking it ridiculous. Francine did uh, actually make hurricane status before landfall in yeah. Louisiana. I right? want to say she was had to be at least category two, might have been category three, but I don't know. Oh, I, couldn't, so it, yeah, I, could, right. I haven't found that anywhere yet. By the time I saw uh, that landfall had happened, it was like already an hour old. So it, the storm had already weakened oh, considerably. At that point, once it's landfall, yeah, it yeah. starts to diminish in strength. But I, know, I it was projected. Bring, up, bring to us up here. Yeah, because it still had 24 hours from the time it became Valley. a hurricane. And 
it's supposed to bounce across the Ohio Valley and then shoot down the Cheat River Valley down to um, the Cape Fear, mouth of Cape Fear there, like around the Carolina Outer Banks. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Cape Hatteras area. Yeah. And then it's supposed to like spin back up into like a tropical storm and possibly a hurricane again and be heading up uh, toward Norfolk and uh, Hampton Roads. Huh. So uh, Francine ain't done yet. This is going to be a traveling wow. hoe. Interesting. Because I thought she was supposed to head up like Chicago way and just kind of yeah, and, sit and there then, and peter out. And then it's going to make like a big, like like drawing like a capital letter N, right? It's going to go up towards Chi-Town and then turn about 100 degrees to the right and head due southeast down to the North Carolina, South Carolina, North Carolina, South Carolina line at the Atlantic yeah, coast. Cause that makes total sense. And then move back in. Yeah. Cause storms do that shit all the fucking time. Well, there's this, like, uh, like how Francine was, was like looking like she was going to go and hit Mexico off. and then decided to go in the exact opposite direction and head for new Orleans. I still haven't seen make it make anything sense. that was like Hurricane Otis. I've never seen a hurricane intensify out of nothing. And what was it like? Ten, eight, no, eight hours. Eight hours, yeah. It was less than 12 hours. It literally eight hours. It didn't even have 10 miles an hour. And I, I swear it was Cat 5 when it made landfall. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it didn't matter because it was one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's that's very suspect. Very suspect. But this is what gets me. This is what distinguishes these new arrivals and immigrants in government housing getting door dashes delivered from none other than yours truly um compared to the regular oh this is a whole lot of vowels to say and not enough consonants but i'm going to try this word native ohioans or or you would probably call poor white trash trailer trash um but, but, you know, black, too. But they're in trailers, too. And they talk with a country accent. Yeah. Even though it's Ohio. You would think it's a northern state. Anyways, um, it, it depends on what part of Ohio you're in, really. But, um, like, basically, the new arrival immigrants all have, like, cars and their teeth and, like, jewelry and clothes and perfume and, like, um, oh, what's that word I'm looking for? Fucking money. How do they all have money? And like all like the people in section eight and with the fucking EBT snap food stamps. Um, like, uh, yeah, I don't understand. Uh, uh, Yona confused again. So confused. What the fuck is going on? And what? Oh, wait a second. Do you find out That's where right. they were getting money from? I would have asked. I'm shameless, though. I'll ask damn near any question. I did see on one of their backpacks the CGI emblem. CGI? Clinton Global Initiative. That's Are defunct. they funding them? No, that's defunct. That's over with. Right. Well, maybe that there's was a other total scam. That, maybe there's other things that CGI stands for. Well, computer generated image. Yeah. But these appear uh, these appear to be flesh and blood people, so I'm guessing that's not it. But it's not just the Haitians, it's the Nepalis, it's the Tajiks, it's the Mongolians, it's the 
Congolese and the Nigerians and I mean and on and on Cambodians a um, bunch of Burmese from Myanmar um, fuck man and they all got money like I, I don't understand man. I don't understand and, and, and you know that that's not even I, I failed to even mention the fact that like Easily a third of Columbus is Hispanic. Hmm. Easily, easily a third of, of, of Columbus is, is I mean, all you hear is fucking, I mean, fucking mariachi. They got the fucking low riders, the fucking with the fucking horn. I mean, yeah. bro, but Reminds like, me of it's Oxford. not just one part of, of Columbus. It's like every single neighborhood has got fucking barrio. Like, wow, man. Even with like downtown, like right on the fucking high street strip in the middle of fucking Ohio State campus, go Buckeyes. Right there by the door of the Dollar General. There's the fucking 85 year old wrinkled woman that looks like a baseball hindcatcher's mitt. I mean, her skin with all the fruit, all the wild, crazy fruit and everything. Like, like, whoa, it's like, wait, wait what? Just, it was just like got the shot you get out, out of the jungle? Um, Cusco, fucking Peru or something. I'm like, well, what the fuck? Even with like the old wooden Coke bottle um, uh, bins, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. wow, man. Like, wow. And right in the middle. Of, but that tells you, man, they're, they're like, they're here, here. I mean, homie didn't just bring up the wife and kids. He brought the aunts and the uncles and the abuelita. Like, and she's selling fruit at the Dollar General. And then right. the she's fucking, already got the hookup. And the Zora is selling the fucking tamales down there at the fucking stadium. And I mean, they're as you do. It's I'm like, wow, man. I, and of course, I love it, man. Every fucking day I get to speak German and French and Spanish and Italian and fuck, man. Everything but Cherokee. <sighs> That's why it was so cool when we drove up to Colorado. Twice, I was just making chit chat, and out of the person I was talking to, or like in one case, the dude's wife, were actual Cherokee, could knew the language or, or were familiar with it. It was so cool, man. I feel so lonely. Damn, it's going to be a fun night at 100% humidity. Wow. Yeah. You're sweating like the horrid church that fucked the whole chorus. Yeah, I know. It's great. And I've got the air on. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's that Texas humidity. Yeah, man. Well, that in the house is fucking drafty. So when it's it so just, humid it just that the Texas in. eaters have yeah. to all wear fucking sweat bands on their head, man. That that's how bad it is. Yeah, I believe it. Because I'm I'm li- I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting here. It's not that warm in the room. But yeah, it's just sticking sticking to you. It's wild. One thing I gotta say though about Columbus and Spring, but really Ohio in general has gone completely fucking apeshit nuts crazy for the roundabout. Whereas like Pittsburgh had jug handle left turns all over the place. I was like, wow, man. I thought jug handles was just a New Jersey thing, but oh no. Oh no, folks. All kinds of jug handle action in fucking Pittsburgh, man. You want to make a left? You got to go to the right. I know you want to go to the left, but you have to get to the right-hand lane and then take this ramp that goes off to the right and then curls around and meets at the next light to go straight across the light because that's how you... 
Yeah, it's called a jug that handle. Makes whatever. Makes no fucking sense. Why would you do that? I don't know, man. It, it's it's a it, it's a idiosyncrasy of traffic design that is unique to New, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Who knows? Maybe Delaware has some jug handle action. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know, probably will never find out. I, Hopefully I, I was not. in Delaware once, and um, all I remember is. Wow, so this is Delaware. I think it was on Route 9, maybe. Because I know it was Route 13. I think, I think it was on Route 13. Because I'd taken the uh, the tunnel, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. You know, it takes you out to the little part of um, Virginia that's just kind of like hanging out there like an epiglottis and deep right. in the mouth there. Um, just an appendage hanging off of Maryland and Actually, it's called the Del Marva Peninsula, I believe. Yes. Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'd gone up to Salisbury and then Ocean City. Maybe it was Kent. Maybe I was in Kent, Delaware. Could have been. Because I think to get to Ocean City, one of the ways is you actually have to go up into Delaware and then you come back down. Yeah, it Maryland. was when we left. Ocean City that we cut across a little part of Delaware on the way back to uh, Cranapolis or Crapolis or whatever it was. Annapolis. Yeah. Maryland twerp country. Go twerps! Hmm. Imagine being on the field and track team for the Maryland Terrapins. Well, like you're, uh, pre- you're, you're the running pre- turtles. Pre-death really? of Glenn Bias, I think it was probably pretty cool, right? <laughs> like, they, they were actually having a pretty good time before that. Wow. And then the 80s happened. Yeah, is it too soon? Yeah, that Lynn Bias, that still, uh, that still rattles people's nerves. Yeah. It was the first that, time I something mean, like that happened. And it, I remember honestly, um, it's like the last time something like that has happened. When was the last time that I like a, watching, a big um, young sports uh, figure got cut down? Like even even before they could get to be a professional. I was watching the game live from Freedom Hall with the Louisville Cardinals, University of Louisville, uh, when the star player, which in his freshman year. Louisville won a national championship in 1986. And so I think this was, I want to say it was his sophomore year. Maybe it was his junior year, 87 or 88. Um, I think it was 88. Anyways, um, maybe second quarter of the game before halftime, he went up to get a rebound or something. And you saw, like, when he came down, like, his foot went in the wrong way and his knee, like, completely dislocated. And it was mm. just, like, gruesome. And he went down hard, smacked on his face, just laid there. And all the trainers, like, made a circle around him. And, like, Freedom Hall was packed to the rafters with people. And, and you could have heard a pin drop for, like, three minutes. And then they hoisted him to his feet, and then the whole crowd was like, hey, oh, gang, thank God he's alive, because it was like right on the heels of the Len Bias just dropping face first on the deck, but like being dead and shit. Right. But apparently it was like because of a heart thing or something. What, Len Bias? Yeah, it, it was a it was a heart condition, because, you know. Well, it was because, because of the cocaine. cocaine exploded his heart. Right. Like, dude was just fucking every minute of every day was just, let's go. That tells you it was really good coke. I mean, it had to have been, right? Because it's not, I mean, the bad stuff will get you too, but it doesn't do it like that. It does it in a different way. Doesn't do it by overworking the organ. And then we saw this play out. With the uh, rollout of the um, jabby McJabs, where 
countless, countless, I mean, literally hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of athletes have publicly collapsed mm -hmm. during play, whether it's rugby or football. Sometimes or even the announcers. Soccer or. Yeah, I just happened to, to see a clip of that uh, again today of that one sportscaster. He's like, oh, well, Bob, the, you know, they played a great game. And the dude beside him is just like, oh, he doesn't realize it until he looks back to try and get a comment. And he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> or like uh, in the uh, in the intro seg for AM Wake Up, the that uh, comedian chick yeah, where she's doing her little stand-up gig and all of a sudden just blam. Yeah. Out like a light. I mean, we've just seen it all over the place. Um, these uh, baffling, mind boggling, inexplicable incidents. It's, and you know, and unfortunately sometimes it's led to people's deaths. Um, where they actually have. Oh, wait a minute. We're not on YouTube. Technology. We don't have to dance around the subject. We can just say whatever Sudden the fuck we adult want. Adult death syndrome or SADS. It is sad. And it's me, very sad. It is the proliferation of the term SADS itself that has really at last helped a lot of people make the connection between SIDS. And SADS because SIDS are crib death, sudden infant death syndrome. SADS are sudden adult death syndrome, where oh, you died and you just had the jab, but it couldn't have been the jab. So it's uh, mind boggling. Um, we're just gonna say it was SADS. Same thing with babies, you, you know, think they give people them a, are a really making the connection or an Octavax where it's got eight different vaccines all whipped into one with adjuvants and then the kid dies and they're like, oh, well, it must have been the, did you have a blanket in the crib? Aha, that's what it was. Sid. <laughs> but do you think people are actually making the connection? Yes. Yes, they are. Well, for example, I base that on the fact that um, for example, just driving from my place to downtown Huntington, there's like six big billboard spots and three of the six billboard spots are taken up by Ohio health department, um, extolling, begging, pleading parents to please come back in and catch their kids up that are behind on their vaccines. Which to me is an open admission of, you know, a great lamentation that I've already heard, you know, in the last Burback meeting, um, the Vaccine and Related Biologic Advisory Committee, the panel of experts at the CDC in Atlanta, Georgia. Right. And they're lamenting the fact that because of the uh, fall off in uptake of the COVID vaccines, they're now seeing a downturn, a sharp downturn in the number of children staying current on their vaccinations. And so it's just having ripple effects as, you as know, it should. They, they, they call it the trust gap with the public and they need better sales and marketing to overcome this trust gap. Uh, because the product is sickening and killing people. Um, so they just need better slogans, obviously. <laughs> of course they do. I mean, and this is your expert. do. This is wow. your fucking PhD, MD fucking experts, man. God damn, Drizzle. Uh, I got it. They're, they're going on a fire call. Give me a second. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was louder than normal. They're just probably doing it because, you know, they're assholes. They also do it at like six o'clock in the morning because nice. they're assholes. Yeah. Wow. I'm sorry. What were we talking about? That completely like interrupted my train of again. thought. That's 
that's all I pretty much do on these shows anymore. I just bitch and piss and moan. <laughs> It has been that kind of week, hasn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Was there? Well, you know, I did actually do some on the ground investigation in these. Oh, yeah. Um, although, when I'm in the midst of doing a DoorDash delivery and delivering to the customer at their place of residence, I've often thought, and I was thinking, you know, today, you know, speaking the Haitian and stuff, man, I should really, it's a shame I'm not taking video of this. But then again, it would be a shame if I did take video of this. And that would seem kind of awkward because they just ordered some food. They didn't consent to be part of a gonzo journalism clip so that's why there's not video of me doing this but i do feel it's all right to talk about it because i'm not doxing their names and addresses and i'm not showing video images of where they fucking live or their appearance so i think it's okay i I think we're okay with what the way i've presented the narrative anyway It's just what I've experienced going out in the real world, going from door to door, house to house, store to store, and mouse to mouse. There you go. Yeah. So how is America looking these days? Because it's it's an interesting perspective to have, right? Just getting to to go out and not even just because you're you're not even just going around your community. You're going around to. A bunch of different communities. Yeah. Basically everything within about a 200 mile radius. So what's America look like right now? Well, for one, traffic has never come back. The roads are very thin. Um, loads of people have been trained and become accustomed to, they've been conditioned to use DoorDash and other um, app delivery apps. Because, I mean, now when I go through neighborhoods, literally every other porch has got shit shoved up by the door. Hmm. And the roads are pretty much empty. And then, of course, I just, I, I just bow my head and shake my head. I just face palm. There's that lovable, depending on what part of, of uh, the country you're in, but anytime you're in a part of town where you see Harris Walls signs and, you know, wealthy Democrats, the ratio jumps up to maybe one out of four, one out of three whether they're alone inside their car or walking alone outside down the sidewalk, they got that face mask on. I don't know if they ever took it off, but they I are seen wearing more masks. Face mask. Yeah. However, when you get down to areas where like people are, you know, keeping the liberals off their lawns with their um, Trump crows and their Trump flags and all that, um, Still, you see about maybe one out of 10 with the mask. And it's normally, you know, Peepa or Nana, um, older folks. Um, you got to get into those Crow? university neighborhoods. You got to get into the college campus areas to really get a bunch of younger people wearing the mask. And, and then, of course, it's. It's a whole different matter when you go into the service industry. So, you know, dealing with employees at the Sheets gas station slash restaurant or the Bob Evans or the Giant Eagle or the Kroger or the Meyer or the Albertsons, you know, and um, all the different service uh, service workers that wear the masks. In order to accommodate that one out of 20 or that one out of 10 or that one out of four customer that is 
Oh my God, I'm not buying anything from you because you're not wearing a mask. You're breathing your coopies on me. <laughs> And, you know, it, what's interesting to me is like all of the yard signs I saw where people were combining their local high school team with politics and religion. So, like, for example, in Wheelersburg. Oh, it's the, like the uh, ultimate team sport. The school mascot is the Pirates. Right. The Barberville Pirates. God is my quarterback. And there's people all over Wheelersburg that have these black and orange sign, which is the, you know, school colors, black and orange. Go Pirates. And it's got the little pirate, you know, with the eye patch and the hat, and the, you know. Anyways, Go Pirates. Um, and But uh, the, the text of the sign says, Prayer works for pirates just like it works for Trump. And I'm like, I see what you're doing there. I see what you're doing. You got the Trump crow. You got the school colors. You combined the Jesus and the Trump. Right. And the pirate. It's, I mean, it's basically a country version of Jesus, Kanye, Hitler. Do they not know? They got that, all three right there, buddy. Yeah, but do they not know that he's the Jewish Messiah? <laughs> Are they unaware of this? Like I thought, everybody knew that. Like he's even hasn't he even he was on uh, like a shekel coin, right? I mean, you know, honestly, I wish. You know what? I'm gonna put There's up a Trump a shekel fucking yard sign. I just need four big letters, D-E-R-P. That's what I'm putting across the front of the yard. But they'll be red, white, blue, and green. Derp. Why green? Because we need to leave room for nature. Yeah. It's all about the earth. That's true. Uh, they they said it on Raven. that monument Raven. that those kids destroyed. <laughs> Speaking of destruction, yeah. um, you know, I, oh, was I finished often, that Freemason book, by the way, total, total piece of crap. I was often, um, I've wondered, you know, because the explanations given for the demise of the American canal systems, yeah, uh, you know, is largely the explanation given by his, American historians as well. Railroads came along in the 1830s and the 1840s. And after the Civil War, the railroads just took over. And while that's true, it's still much cheaper to ship by water than by rail. Um, and so I'm like, what happened to all of these canals considering the tremendous expense that was, you know, just outrageous treasure and fortune that was expended to build these canals like the Erie Canal and the Ohio Canal and the Wabash Canal and on and on and on, all of these navigation projects. And all of a sudden, after 70, 80 years of just amazing, bountiful prosperity and, you know, interstate commerce, they all are just gone to shit and it's just because they built railroad tracks to them. Well, that's, that's not really the case that the actual story. And of course it varies by which canal and section you're talking about, but by and large, um, there were catastrophic floods that happened that just completely laid havoc to these, canal systems that you know washing out locks and dams washing out weirs washing out um feeder lakes and everything that mm -hmm. supplied water to the canal so they could keep locking boats through the lock chambers because you need water to do that and 
you know, um, and that's not really a story. I just, uh, just don't hear much about it. Um, but hmm. I, I feel like that's something that's been rather memory hole in the United States. And, and that is these just biblical epic fucking floods like flood of 1913 flood of 1917 flood of 1937 and i'm not just talking the ohio valley and the mississippi valley and the missouri valley i mean all over the east coast of the midwest and the west coast there have been just some catastrophic floods that happened between civil war and world war ii period that it's like it, it's not talked about, you know, not to mention the terrible fires, um, hmm. you know, the great Chicago fire, the great right. Detroit fire, the great Cleveland fire. I mean, there were these great fires where basically the cities burnt to the fucking ground. Um, I think St. Louis had three major great fires. Um, uh, DC had a few. Yeah. Uh, and it's just interesting to me, um, other than like earthquakes and hurricanes, don't really hear much about the other catastrophic disasters. Um, I guess a fire. We haven't really had that many. But I mean, well, yeah, the, you get you get a maybe a couple hurricanes each season. Um, well, uh, like oh, once a decade, example, you'll get you'll get something like a category five, right? Like the, once uh, every decade or two, you'll get something really, really nasty. Other than that, you get some normal. Ones. The March flood of 19 and 13 that hit Indiana. Well, it hit Actually, Illinois, I have that Indiana, pulled up right Ohio, now. Kentucky and West Virginia. Oh, dude, it was flood, but Alabama, it, it Arkansas, Ohio, Connecticut, Florida. Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Mississippi, Missouri, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. What's that? that that's the location of the Great Flood of 1913. Yeah, 1913. It's like... And uh, 25 fucking states. Um, for example, in, in the central but Ohio you're region, not, you're not going to believe Iota this. Valley, you're not going to believe um, this. Around Columbus and Circleville and Chillicothe, Ohio. Uh -huh. On March the Tuesday, March the 25th, in a six hour period of time, they got eight inches of rain in six fucking hours that sounds and like that pretty much destroyed the ohio canal the ohio and erie canal which stretched from the ohio river to um i don't know lake erie yeah that's right um ohio and erie canal yeah so w the wikipedia page for the great flood of 1913 is listing the total property damage at 333 million dollars did you hear that, Shelly? Good night, everybody. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Well, um, I, uh, I've got so many new songs I've worked on, um, which I heard you play, uh, which I got to catch up on the last two broadcasts today, listening in to the Liberty Radio streams. Thank you for playing my, uh, Nine Inch Nails request, finally. Um, better late than You're never. Welcome. And um, on the new music, Potluck, you, you got in the new track that uh, I did with uh, yeah, Dr. Yeah, which is Dead phenomenal, Bella. by the way. The audience was raving about it. Uh, Garden At least of, the, ones, uh, the ones who speak. You know, the 90% that Blast we don't hear from, we don't know what they think. Oh, cool. But um, I've got a, a, 
several other tracks, but one of them is about the uh, 1913 flood and the uh, life on the canal, living in the canal boats and stuff. And, you know, they still have canal rides on the CNO Canal. Um, oh, yeah. Which runs from uh, D.C. up through uh, Virginia and Maryland all the way to um, Cumberland. Goes up into Harper's Ferry, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 The C.N.O. Canal. Cumberland. O. Well, it was supposed to be the Cumberland and Ohio Canal, but it never made it all the way to the Ohio. I think I might, I might have canoed that one summer in my youth. It's quite possible. I know I did the uh, the upper uh, uh, the upper regions of the Potomac, like before it gets really really deadly down closer to DC. Yeah, like we yeah, did like a week on the like Potomac. Class five rapids. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was a lot of fun. Going down uh, the river with the water moccasins and the copperheads. Yeah. And they're just swimming along beside you. Oh, I'll get rid of the YouTube tab. Yeah. All right. Why? What are you doing? Do I need to, um, do I need we'll to set up, up for something? Video. Do I need to pay attention or can I keep spacing out? Um, well, I was thinking. Oh, no, 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 no. We're, we don't do ads. We do not do ads. There we go. Okay. So I've got the uh, the video that I made for the canal song because I actually found canal footage. Um, oh. And it turns out, because I was trying to find footage of one of these stretches of canal where it has, you know, four or five locks that are like back to back to back where they're stacked on top of each other. And I found a video of it that had a working towpath with a mule team pulling manually, you know, uh, a mule team with the rope pulling a fucking canal boat up one of these old stone locks with the wooden doors. And I, I was like, fuck yeah, that's because I, I, I was wanting to show what the canal looked like when it was in operation. And you can't really do that with most of the canals in the United States because because they're not in operation. None anymore. of them are hardly in operation. Other, but, but there were some stretches of the CNO Canal and and the and the Ohio and Erie Canal and others where I was able to get some footage of mule teams pulling canals. But when it came to the locks, I had to go to England, and uh, I ended up uh, using footage of the Foxton locks. Well, when I got done recording the song. And then I wrote the lyrics and sang the lyrics and then made the video. I sent it over to Dr. Dennis. Um, and he immediately messaged back, which for him is like in a few hours, because there's like a, is it six hour time difference on the other side of the pond? I don't know. It's, you know, whether I'm talking like, because right now dead fellows listening in from Bangladesh, but it's early yeah, yeah. in the morning there because they're like, yeah, and time zone change. Anyway, so I send the Day song and video to too. Dr. Dennis. He immediately messages back like, hey, that's like literally walking distance from where I live. I live right by Foxton Locks. I picked oh, wow. it down there. Well, shit, but, he wow. can go get footage for you. Wow. Well, that's awesome. Because, you know, in England... They spend um, uh, just a small fortune on canal repair and canal restoration. And particularly over the last 50 years, there's hundreds of miles of canal that have been refurbished and brought back into service. Channel redug and water reflooded. And anyways, because um, I thought, well, I could play that live, but then. Uh, I think if I play something live, I'll play the Chan Master song, and I might save that to the very, very end, playing live. Well, uh, but you. in the meantime, you're the only one that gets to play shit. So, 
Yeah. Uh, something. Uh, I didn't to, have something uh, saved. I don't remember what it tease was. Tease the palate. Um, now that I've segued into the canal history moment here, um, uh, play the canal video. Uh, and then um, there, there at the end of the show tonight, we'll uh, do Chan Master Live for uh, our good friend at uh, Roar Media independent podcasters like ourselves over there on the Westy coast. And of course, um, our hearts, minds, and prayers are constantly with Chan and she's, uh, laid up in the hospital bed, um, fighting the good fight day by day. Um, anyways, uh, well, from one C word to the next, let's go, let's put the anal in canal. What do you say? Oh, uh, um wait what is it i need to share the screen so i guess i'll use screen share. oh you've done this before come on it's been don't a while like you don't know which oh come on yeah, i really wilded weeks. out during mandated glorious holiday you don't understand <laughs> you must have good lord uh yeah there it is the, the, this is called the town jake uh, and for those that love an alternative uh, title, where is some? Um, all right. Say that with full echo. You like that, don't you? Hey, it's a radio show. We do shit like this. Um, we can. So without further ado, everybody climb onto the boat and uh, let's all float. Nearly a hundred years of fame, destroyed by eight inches of 
paint Stages planted upon those banks Such a wish of life, no things Mills and current given speed Cruising foot loose, fancy Wow, that was a short one. <laughs> Let's see, I think I'm off mute now. There yeah, we go. you're off mute now. We can hear you coughing. <laughs> well, that that's the cool thing about music. There's so many different styles and types of music and um, instruments and stuff. You know, like... Mm -hmm. uh, it's not very often that I work with uh, reeded instruments, but uh, occasionally I will dabble in some bassoon or clarinet or saxophone. It happens. Oh, yeah. It happens. No oboe. Even though I am a brass player myself, I, I do dabble in the woodwindage. Yeah. I always weren't wanted to learn to play saxophone. That was one of the ones I haven't gotten to yet. Still working on drums. One day. Saxophone is the new number. Shout out the new number. Uh, shout out to the new number of saxophone. Oh, yeah. There you go. I mean, and and imagine, try if you will, Drizzle, to imagine Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, Sands saxophone. I I can't. I, it, it wouldn't be. It the wouldn't same. be Dark Side of the Moon. It wouldn't be Dark Side of the Moon. No. no, every every piece is necessary. If you remember, that would one be of like it ceases to be. Uh, that would like was meant that to would be. be like B O C. Don't fear the reaper with no cowbell. Correct. That, that would just you would just have correct. a blue colt at that point. No oyster. Which that's something else I haven't heard in a while. We might have to get that on the playlist next week. I need I need to hear some more Nashville pussy. I'm not getting enough. You know, uh, that's probably going to be Tuesday night. I think the song uh, by BOC uh, Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. And I was mixing it with. Um, did I mix it with Emerson Lake Palmer? Was it ELP or was it ELO? That's, I was just about to ask that question. Or was it Electric Light Orchestra? Was it ELP or ELO with the BOC? Or maybe it was the BTO. See, all these 70 bands, man, I'm getting lost in acronyms now. I'm so, conf I'm so confused to Yoda again. Yeah. God damn it. Well, it's simple. You, just, you choose a name that has, has three words, and then you can make an acronym. I like swear if Stone Temple Pilots, if somebody SCP. tells me TSMB is the Steve Miller band, I'm going to smack him in the face. No, it's Steve Miller band or the Steve Miller band. Nobody says TMSB or TSMB. It would just be SMB. Nobody does that until now. That's, uh, I don't think Steve Miller's that cool, quite honestly. He really only had the one hit. You know, the Have you ever heard anybody album. refer to Grand Funk Railroad as GFR? No, I don't think so. But then no. I don't, I don't hear people talking about Grand Funk a whole lot. But if it was, if it was abbreviated though, and it's Grand Funk Railroad, also just the, the right amount of cowbell. Be GFRR because railroad is double R, right? Yeah, GFR. And this is why the, the, the fans keep tuning in to get fact harder because we probe Apparently. the more probing issues of, you know, what exactly is the standard when it comes to bands that can be abbreviated? Because hmm. some bands can be abbreviated. Right. Some bands can't. That is true. That is true. I have noticed that. But then again, I, I spend time building playlists, so I'm always trying to 
cut corners? There's not that many new acts that have received that treatment, but a, a, a notable standout would be NKO TV. Oh, wow. You're you digging real. I, see, I was thinking even more current than that. I was thinking like MCR. Right. You know, My Chemical Romance. Right. Other than that, I can't really think of a whole lot lately. But then again, I'm not. I'm or not exactly PATD, up with you got the disco. I've never heard anybody say PATD though. I haven't either. I I haven't ever heard anybody admit to actually listening to that. Like I know, I know little like teenage girls listen to it back when I was working at the record store. But other than that, I've never. I guess there was just. Uh, there was just a sweet spot there of like the mid to late seventies where they're there for a period of time. There was probably like 15, 20 different musical acts yeah. that were all known by their acronyms. Well, I, I think Bachman Turner was the one that kind of made it cool, right? Yeah. Cause you got, you, you got the BTO. In their TCB. Right. Yeah. You know? It's just, it's a faster way to communicate. Plus it's rock. It's in your face, man. It's, it's fucking rock. But then, I don't know. But then there's ACDC. How do you explain well, I was only ACDC. born in 74, man. I didn't know what the fuck was going on back then. I thought butterflies were cool. I didn't know anything about a, a BTO. Man, I'm trying to think. What was the name of that one fucking band? Oh. Nazareth. Yeah, yeah. Nazareth. Man, that's some fire shit, man. I, I should go find some Nazareth. Wow. DC 101 used to play them a, a fair bit. I was always surprised when I would hear Nazareth come on. Oh my God. Over half of the fucking radio stations. Oh, is DC 101 still even in existence? All Spanish. Yes. They are? Good God. What is their format now? Clear Channel Radio, I Heart Radio. Uh, well, obviously, I mean, Clear Channel owns all the radio stations. Yeah. DC's Taylor alternative Swift, rock radio. <coughs> God. Oh shit! They still have Elliot in the morning on. Good God. Ugh. Yeah. Terrible, terrible morning show. Let me guess. Avoid the 66. Don't take the beltway. And uh, your best bet is just take US 50. Yeah, it's, so, uh, Elliot um, in the Morning is... It's basically like our format, right? Like, to where there's there's no format. You try and max out on dick and fart jokes as much as you possibly can and just chew up time until the clock expires. Right? But yeah. they suck at it. Oh, that reminds me. Speaking of dick and fart jokes, um, I, I didn't forget this time to mention Ukraine. Uh, so anyways, back to what you were saying. Oh, I was just saying, Elliot in the morning sucks. It's always sucked. I don't know how it's managed to survive this long other than like they just don't care what they're putting on the airwaves. Like, honestly, the DC 101 morning show has been shit since uh, Grease Man. Yeah. That was the last time it was good. And that was what? 85, 86? Something Man, like that. I wish that. I could remember his name. Was it Ari? Um, David Pakman used to have an Iranian sidekick on his show, The David Pakman Show. And the sidekick was actually cool. 
And he bailed on that show hmm. to never return. He just left. And when he left, of course, um, that's when David Packman just did a big old swan dive off the high diving board into a completely empty fucking swimming pool of liberal um, invisible tears. Um, and I mean, and you know, I've just watched him melt down. I've watched all of these so-called free thinking intellectuals just completely brain melt into thought police and group think and mm -hmm. uh, show that they're pretty much forsaking all logic and reason and embracing Foucault abstractism. There is no right or wrong. There's just the current thing, which I'm for. <laughs> and I, wait, wait a second I've just received another opinion this just in you know I mean, god. oh my yeah, god new information or, has or, or presented then, itself then there are those who are free thinkers who are like hmm you know this truth is kind of liberating hmm. there's got to be a better way to monetize this Shout out Derek Bros. Anyways, back to you. You said it, I did. I did not say that. I could drop if more anybody names, put those words in my mouth. Say, I can I can do trouble how do just fine. Monetize on my own? logic and reason and truth. Well, you know? it's pretty easy, actually. I I, I have nothing. I, I honestly have nothing to say. Unless on you're the subject at Wawa right now. between the hours of seven a.m. and nine p.m., which is about two hours. Yeah. Anyways, you'll be fine. Just use cash. Yeah. Oh, big news, Yona! I totally forgot to announce this on the air last night. That's how high I was. I heard that it's working. Yeah, I'm glad to hear yeah. it. I heard from uh, Angry North this week. Well, I heard from him uh, just before we went on hiatus for uh, Glorious Holiday, right? And I asked him a question. I've been waiting, waiting to hear from him. I guess he was waiting for us to get back on the air. We got back on the air Tuesday night, so I finally heard from him yesterday. Uh, he's coming on Monday. Blammo. Yeah, 3 p.m. Eastern, Angry North returns to the Liberty Radio Studios, ladies and gentlemen. Mark it down on your calendar. I'll try to remember to, to say that again tomorrow night, too. And, and I, I guess it goes without saying, um, he's still angry. Yes, I believe so. I believe so. Especially now that uh, the NHS won't uh, treat him anymore. Because he, he thinks uh, bad thoughts. He's a thought criminal. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. the good news is uh, here in the United States, uh, up north, there is anger. I'm surprised he, they're letting him walk around free. Quite honestly. I shouldn't put ideas into anybody's heads, quite honestly. I, I should just shut I mean, that line in, of thought down right now. In the United Kingdom, isn't it racist to just stand there and silently pray? I believe it's against the law to breathe now. <laughs> I wish I was making this up. I really uh... just wait. Just wait. It's a bridge of size. Oh, which yeah, th that's another song we're working on. There's like uh, in addition to Garden of Blasphemy. There's there's just a there, there's a lot of buns in the oven there's a lot of irons in the fire there's a lot of lot of stuff uh in the works right now um so stay tuned good. listeners good there's gonna be a lot more stuff dropping here uh and shortly and uh the best part of all honestly it just keeps getting better so we keep making more I would agree I was I was actually quite impressed with the track that we played last night. 
it's one of those times where it the the you don't realize how long the song is because once you get to the end you're like oh wow it's done already the, what was wild about that was it started out with just like a 30 second intro that dead Bella had made. Um, and he sent it to me. Uh, and he was like, uh, what do you think of this? I was like, Ooh, I like it. He's like, um, he's like, well, I've, I've got some lyrics from, uh, Kingsley. So he sent me the lyrics to it. And, uh, and he's like, we just need you to sing the chorus. I'm like, okay. Well, of course, I look at the chorus and I'm like, well, I have to rearrange just a few of the words on the chorus so that it will rhyme, so that I can sing it and it'll be catchier, you know. Um, he's like, yeah, do whatever you got to do. Um, and I was like, well, like, what's the verse? Well, we don't have a verse yet. Well, what's the chorus? Well, we don't have a chorus yet. Oh. He's like, well, make up a melody and make up some chords and stuff. And so, um, ended up uh, developing this one theme with the uh, piano melody. Like, do, 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 do. And anyways, and with chords. And, and I mean, it's incredible with just a crap sample and, MIDI file that I put together and sent back to him and then he takes it and masters it and then brings in Kingsley's vocals and masters it and puts it in there and then uh, <laughs> and then I sent my uh, vocal take uh, for the chorus part mm -hmm. which he did uh, some, and some extra he got special the whole song stuff on put that together and as is the case with dead fella, God bless his heart. Um, he got the whole song together, sent it to me. I was like, yeah, man, that's fire. That's slapping. He's like, uh, I think I'm going to add another part and change this. And, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 versions later. It's, it's funny. Cause like I've, I've downloaded every copy, you know, as I've been adding stuff to it. And, like, I think the, the final, Final version I have is like uh, Garden of Blasphemy, final, clean, master, last version for real. Dot FLAC. Like, <laughs> I'm serious this time. Just go over and change the audio on that video. Just one I, last. I, I know that. Yeah. Where the name just gets longer and longer and longer because you got to remember all the shit um, you did to it. But every single time it's better and better and better. Like he's been doing this thing called gain staging and mm -hmm. just it has to do with the engineering of the final sound. You know, yep. it's just. I know exactly just what you're talking about. Incredible. The studio quality of the mixing at this point, it's just jaw dropping. Um, and, uh, I mean, and if plus, I, if like, I had had um, this technology 25 years ago, I might not have stopped making music. Yeah. And and plus, like, um, it's pretty wild, like, uh, just how these things come together um, with, like, Bridge of Signs and the flames on the river. And then the very next day, I'm sitting down, he sends me the lyrics. Oh, the new song is called Bridge of Signs over the river of Hades and fire. And I'm like, wow, I was literally at the abandoned bridge last night, looking at the city across the river and all the city lights were like flames reflecting off the river. Cause of what? that was a thought stuck in my head. And then I'm reading this this day and it's like, yeah, Kingsley wrote those lyrics last night and I wrote this melody last night. And so then start putting stuff together for bridge of size and, it's very clear to me that like we're all tapped in to the very same for lack of a better word stream of consciousness and it's just simply uncanny that like for example Kingsley starts out writing lyrics 
and then records his voice and just naturally is recording. And even though he's not singing, even though it's just spoken word, nonetheless, the pitch that he's delivering the words at and the scale that his tones are actually hitting is on E minor scale. Well, then it just so happens unrelated and not in coordination with him. Dead fella then writes a guitar riff in E minor at the same time. I've written a new piano jingle in E minor. And the very next day, we all get together and it's like, oh, well, he's got this thing he said in E minor. He's got a guitar part in E minor. And I just played a song in E minor. And boom, it's, an, I mean, and, and, they, and they just keep coming together like that. And it's, it's really uncanny. I mean, what are the odds? Because, I mean, like, because he's, you know, Dead Belt's in Bangladesh and Kingsley's in fucking hmm. Northern England and, I'm in bumfuck Appalachia, America, and yet we keep song after song, like not even coordinating with one another, and it just keeps hitting on the same key or the same BPM and or the same idea or every it, you know, anyway. Yeah, I believe that's called serendipity. Yes. If yes. I'm not mistaken. And that's another reason why the the music and the songs and the albums and everything are just you know materializing it at such uh, a ferocious accelerated pace because it's like it's not like any one of us is leading the whole group with a particular artistic vision per se it's more like all of us are being led or all of us are tuned in to the same stream of consciousness. Right. And so we're all just giving our interpretations of the very same vibration, tempo, key, tuning, you name it. Um, right. It's it's similar to, to when you have uh, a bunch of women all living under the same house together. Yeah, and, and they and all start um, their cycling period sync up. Yeah, yeah, they it's all rag like at the same time. Yeah, and, well, and so there's that, a, a personal regard, shorthand that you develop with other human beings over time. There's other that accelerates all these other that process. Stepped in and stepped out. Yeah, you know they've been able to step in and step out too, like uh, Recycle Bin Laden, B One, and others. Um, because it's a stream of consciousness. It, it, it's an openness. And, and when you're open to independent thought and independent analysis, then you're able to intake new and exciting ideas, especially the bad ones. Um, and and well, play even it out. the bad ones. I wouldn't say try especially the bad ones, but... You know, uh, because that's how you find out if they're bad. Well, you find out that they're if whether or not they're bad by exploring them. You don't know whether an idea is good or bad when you first encounter it. You have to explore it. Find out where it leads. I've always heard that you shouldn't shit where you eat, but I have I heard that as well. This. That's how I you get dysentery. Although some people, you know, they have that fetish. I don't, I, I honestly don't get it. I don't understand how they survive, but. You know, I did notice one, one thing though. Um, and I was very keenly no, looking for it because of course, um, where a lot of the door dash deliveries the pickups and deliveries that I do are like to the downtown central business district area. And so if I'm trying to get through town quickly and jump through three or four or six or eight or 10 city blocks, I'm always running the brick alleys rather than staying on the main drag because 
that's got the old stoplights downtown where they they don't have the cables in the road. They're just on a timer. So if you catch the red light, you have to sit there for two minutes while right. the fucking ghost vehicles are using the green light. And you're the only person at the intersection. And it's just, you just have to wait for two minutes and you see the green light ahead. And as soon as your light turns green, the one ahead turns red. And now you get to do the two minutes again, waiting on go. So, I'm taking alleys constantly. And because of that, in virtually every town, there's fucking stray cats everywhere. Oh, just wait. Just wait. We got more Haitians coming. But. I got solutions. Man, I I never saw a stray cat in Springfield. Well, uh, granted, we might, I was on there we might go hours. grab some mong. I was all Get up them in there. I too. never saw That'll any. take care of that cat problem. And I just thought Among that was them so everywhere cat. I go, it was like stray cats. Yeah. I didn't see any stray cats. Well, I mean, we got all those newcomers, you know. They uh they need to eat as well. It's so different. um I got I got bamboozled into um providing refuge. For one of Briar Rose's brothers, half brothers. Oh, awesome! Yeah. So I don't, I don't know, I don't remember if uh, Fido told you or not. I don't, I don't think so. I don't, and I don't know if I told you either. Um, the well, that when Monday, we, July, when we went over there, she got to hang out with that brother. Well, no, he hadn't been born yet. Oh, they weren't oh, born the, the until that brother. Monday morning when we were coming back from Colorado. Wow. That's when they were born. They were born right before so that he's hurricane one of the kids came that through. hadn't been born yet. Right. Wow, what a hoe bag that mama cat is. Total hoe bag. She's Jeez. getting her uterus ripped out, though. So apparently it's only going to be two broods. And I only have to provide homes for two out of the. Is it like 10 of them? Something Surely like that. he couldn't be as crazy as Briar Rose. No, she said this this batch is uh, much more chill. She's Thank been God. able to notice that already. And I decided to go with a male this time, hoping that'll balance out like the, the hysteria. Name? I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided. He's a uh, so he's he's a black and white tuxedo, right? Uh, he's got giant paws for an eight week old kid, uh, and they're all white. All his paws are white, so it looks like he's he's got boots on, right? Uh, he's got two little white streaks just under his nose that make it look like he has a mustache. And then he's got uh, a band of white that comes up uh, just under his chin. Wow, he, he sounds like the, the planter's nut guy from the planter's peanuts. Almost, almost, yeah. Um, well, there was, you go, there's a name for him. Call him planter. I was, I was actually thinking Major Tom. There you go. Yeah. I don't know. I might come up with something better. This is ground control to Major Tom. Yeah. I like the uh, Ziggy Marley Stardust remix earlier tonight. Oh, yeah. That was nice. The well, Ziggy Stardust was, well, yeah. remix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, Easy Star All Stars. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome reggae band. That's right, yeah, that Coop. Awesome. Tom is a great name, especially for a cat. Especially for a male cat. Because he does yeah. remind me a little bit of Tom. From Tom and Jerry. As far as his markings go. And of course, Major Tom would be the same rank as uh, the High Yona. That's right. Which is better than Lieutenant, but not quite Colonel. Right. Well, I, I would have to outrank him, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, word has it 
up at S4, you're in the line for a promotion. Won't be a lieutenant colonel for much longer. No, I will only ever be a lieutenant colonel. Uh, soon to be never, full bird. Never, never go higher. Hey, did did what did did uh, uh, Ollie North become a, a general or a rear admiral or anything like that? No, he's always ever been Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. Did what? But Lieutenant Colonel Sanders became Colonel Sanders. Well, no one calls Harlan Sanders Lieutenant Colonel anymore because he became fully Colonel Sanders. That's because he had a very small penis. And he needed that kind of validation. Now, I'm sure if he smelled his own sperm, it had 11 herbs and spices. Am I right, Wheezy? None of them were bleach. Anyways. I had completely forgotten about that. That that would be original recipe. That's what happens when you mix alcohol and live radio, my friend. That's one of the things that can happen. That's correct. Oh, shit. What's up? I almost forgot. We had our um, super duper Trump Harris debate the other night. Oh, that's right. I didn't watch a, a, a lick of it. I still haven't. Uh, I don't. I think they played a little bit it, on the No Agenda show today, maybe, any, but I like blocked it out or something. I don't know. I haven't it's watched weird. any clips. No. I have nothing. I I got I got nothing. I saw Disclosed TV had posted clips, and I just scrolled right past them. That's probably bad. Mm-hmm. I should probably have uh, at least like grabbed them so that the audience could watch them if they want to. But I'm just I'm. Sorry, I mean, it, not interested. Okay, you know, there's this one old friend, not going to name name. Well, okay, let's start over. There's this old um, acquaintance. Okay, let's start over again. There's this old former co-worker. Right. Yeah, that's better. Okay, yeah. This former co-worker I know that, like, uh, had a pinball machine and everything and, like, uh, well, the room next to his room, which used to be the garage. And, and he had the tchotchke cabinets and stuff. Um, and he had all of the He-Man action figures, you know, the Skeletor, the Orko, right. the Man-at-Arms, Battle Cat, all that shit. He had She-Ra. Yeah, all of it. And any more, you know, online or in person. When people start talking about politics, I just imagine this old, um, fr- uh, old former coworker, um, <laughs> like, bro, like, look at the triclops, man. I never even took it out of the box. You know how much it's worth? Hundred bucks. I, I view it the same. It's like a psychosis or something. Like a little bit. You're still talking about. You call you you you're calling them action figures, but you're a grown man playing with dolls. Uh, I, yeah, 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 yeah. And and you've got Trump crows on your porch. Get help, seriously. Jesus, man. dude. Again, it there there has been and continues to be a mental health epidemic taking place inside the borders of the United States. And nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody. I'm more than willing to talk about it. I have an open forum that I host for two hours every Friday night. I am more than happy to talk about it. Nobody's come on to talk about it. And guess what? It's kind of disappointing. And that immigrant triangle when you go to the Dollar General and the McDonald's and the Taco Bell and the Walmart, over half of all the workers in the pot pie on gray. Say what? I speak French. No English. Because they're Haitian. They got jobs. How does they that work? work? 
How can you work if you don't speak the language? All these immigrants pouring into the country, man. They are the labor replacement force. Well, of course they are. It's just a constant They're also going to be the cleanup pattern. force. Bring in the Irish. Bring in the Germans. Bring in the Italians. Bring in the Mexicans. Bring in the Haitians. Bring in the Ethiopians. Bring in more Africans. Bring in more Latinos. Bring yeah. in more Asians. God damn, man. It's this, again, it's the same strategy that has been employed over and over again all throughout history. Yeah. It it's was the done to the, the Chinese. It was done to the Irish. It was done to fucking everybody. Mickey labor. Like, I don't, I mix. don't understand how people don't see this. It's wild. You know, when you go back and read some, well, for thus, for those 11 percenters like the Yona that actually go back and read the old books when they're talking about Mickey. I, actually, I like that 11 percenters. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Mickey and Cooley Labor. Mickey Labor uh, is Irishman. Cooley Labor is Chinaman. And they just talk about right. Mickeys and Cooleys like they're Negroes. They're just, you know, Cooleys are yellow Negroes and Mickeys are spotted Negroes. They got freckles. Right. Um, <laughs> and and that's like what 1910 1890 again from yeah. the civil war to world war ii is just a gaping fucking memory hole i think the chinese like, started in 1870 because if i remember correctly it was actually the british that were supplying them that's right opium wars Ah, yes. Wow, it's already 1142. Jeez, oh, man. Wow. I think I hit everything I wanted to hit. Um, definitely not the debate because I don't, I don't know anything about it. So if that's, if that's what you guys tuned in for tonight, uh, shame on you. Oh, I do want to say really quick, uh, especially since this one is going on the replay. Uh, massive gratitude to Alex C who totally surprised us by upping his recurring value return to Liberty radio by 150% ladies Blam. and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, we, we could not you, Alex C. absolutely. Thank you. Alex. Intensifies. We could not do this without you, sir. That's awesome. And that's why Alex C puts the sum in awesome. That's right. That was a that was a pleasant surprise earlier. I didn't even know that you could do that with the because because he does it through the website. So he just uses the little widget on the website, and apparently you can do whatever you need to do. I don't know. I can't see or do anything with any of it. I think I can like cancel stuff out if necessary. But that's about it. Well, I tell you what. Um, let's see here. I believe uh, I did give a teaser before on a previous show of the track "Sun Shadows." You can remember that far back. Because I think I played like uh, just a little snippet from the video and then I made it private. Um, uh, but uh, uh, you might have. Anyways, th this is a little treat for Alex C. Um, we do appreciate the value for value system we have going here. And uh, as the drizzle reminds you constantly, membership comes with benefits. Hey. Membership has its privileges. That's right. Um, and so here is a little instrumental of the uh, the track by uh, Kingsley Dennis, uh, Dead Bella, and uh, yours truly, El Corresponsal. 
DJ Hayona. Uh, this is called um, Sun Shadow. Uh, let's see here. Where else do you get live music, ladies Bam. and gentlemen? All right. That was good. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that was really good. <clears throat> Which, um, what's wild to me is like with every song that I've worked on with uh, Dead Fella, like it always starts out with little samples and we'll try this, we'll try that, and then it changes and metamorphosizes and metamorphs and i mean before long it's a totally different song and um we were talking one day on the phone about the fact that uh, eventually there's going to be this cool ass album where we're going to have all of these alternate versions of the songs and and just basically just have all these alternate ver you know two or three alternate versions of like five or six different songs it'd be like 14 we kind of be something yeah. like like nine inch nails the downward spiral where you have all these different takes of oh, of dude, uh, there was so of, much you know where he did further down the spiral after the downward well, it spiral was, yeah it, and it wasn't just that i mean there were there were other releases uh, that came out after the album for singles that yeah. had, you know, five, six, seven, ten remix tracks of various tracks on the album. Like there's good God, man, the amount of I mean, there was there was shit in uh the uh the screw tape uh, not screw tape, um uh tapeworm, the tapeworm project. Yeah. That never even got released. Yeah. Like like hundreds of hours of audio that never even made it to to the consumer like it's unreal the amount of audio it's just, that it, he created it's for exciting that like because i mean you know we officially put out one album we've got really two albums in the works and there's probably at least three to four albums just laying in the floor it's it's just crazy but i mean where you know he keeps coming out with new samples i keep coming up with new songs kingsley keeps coming up with new word uh lyrics and um it's just amazing I, i've just i've never seen such a constant flow of uh originality and creativity and it, it's such a honor and a privilege to work with those two guys uh but i'm able to keep up i put out a lot of shit myself yeah you do <laughs> you really do I, which is dude, incredible kingsley, considering i work all the time well yeah that's that's the thing kingsley blows me away with his uh his publishing yeah, like he's always putting new stuff out. I mean, it's he's unreal. writing entire books. Talk about people reading yeah. books. This motherfucker's writing entire books, book after book after book, yeah. and he's an acclaimed author. Yeah, as well as publishing videos on his YouTube channels, video essays, and uh, lectures, and thought experiments, and all sorts of stuff. He made a killer music video. For guard to blasphemy. 
Oh yeah. Killer music video. So that Kingsley did the video. And it's really awesome because like every time I do songs with um Dead Fella and Kingsley, um Kingsley like will generally make a music video and put it up on his YouTube channel. But mm -hmm. uh this time Dead Fella beat him to the punch and Dead Fella posted it to his YouTube first. Yes, he did. Which was which was a, a, a bit of a change. I like it. Um, but the cool thing about it is I'm getting back on YouTube again. And because I mean, like I'm on my sixth YouTube channel. <laughs> and because YouTube just God, YouTube hates me. They hate my they lyrics. They really do. They hate my music. They hate my shows. They hate anything I do. Like, and they're on to me too. Like, to get my sixth sock account, I had to open two new fucking VPN overseas email accounts. And God wow, damn it, man. fucking proton they mail must, and all this. Shit. Yeah, they must have your. Uh, uh your IP information. Yeah, they're on my IP address. Yeah. So I had to I had to go 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 proxy serve that ass. Right. <laughs> That's Sorry. funny. I was Sorry. I was actually surprised that when we find uh, a workaround. Fuck it, we ball. The show goes absolutely. on, Drizzle. Absolutely. Speaking of which, that design will be up in uh, the Liberty Radio boutique soon. I just need to get it to Ryan so he can get it up on the store. If you guys saw that in the Telegram channel this week, uh, that exists. It's going to become a t-shirt soon, very, very soon. Sweet. Yeah. I'll be excited to get that one. If I actually get it, we'll see. Well, shit, we still got eight minutes left, man. What else you got? Well, I, I did say uh, I was going to do... Uh, Chan Master live. Um, Chan is fighting the uh, the lung cancers there, and uh, one of my favorite um, shows, um, Beauty and the Beast, which they do on Friday nights. She and Oz, and then you know Amber and others. Uh, do their shows on there as well. Roar Media Network. And um, I'm like, I, you know, because where I do my own, I've been doing my own podcast now for a couple of years, the Peasants Podcast, you know, and I, I learned uh, so many things from little tricks that they do, which I never have gotten the green screen yet, but I'm, I'm well on my way. Uh, this, this is the start of my green screen. Um, pretty soon it'll stretch all the way across and it'll be green. And then I can have a fake background like the fancy people, um, which, you know, uh, a cult priestess and other people tried to help me with that. But, you know, Amber and Shannon have been helping me with that too. And I've been taking notes from them on, you know, tricks and of the trade, um, and how to broadcast yourself. And, but the graphics and the, and the, things and the what, what do you call them filters that they could do and mm -hmm. all this cool shit they were doing um and so it just mm -hmm. it's just been very startling all of a sudden to like yeah anyway i'm just gonna play the song for chain cut the bullshit and get to the music here uh, uh, we're, we're very small i was actually interested where you were going but oh well well, it's just a very, it's just a very small community of, uh, what I would like to call independent thinking broadcasters, not to be confused with independent broadcasters. Cause right. though that gets into different colors and stripes altogether. Yeah. There, there's a variety of, uh, so-called, uh, air quote, independent broadcasters. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm talking about the independently thinking broadcasters and it's a very small, small group. And, and 
God bless her. I, I do love my Chandas. So this is Chan Master. good all right hopefully we have not all the time yet yeah oh by the way uh heavy d checked in uh a while ago Lamo. yeah he said he hasn't seen a single cloud or contrail all week awesome I, I can't it's been cloudy all fucking week because of the hurricane so i don't know i don't know what the hell's going on with that shit uh, we might see sun tomorrow, potentially. It has been teased. Well, at least there'll be a humidity. Oh, it, the humidity is already will here. Be we humidity. don't have to wait till tomorrow for that. It's here right now, and we got all of it. Oh, if you want some you humidity, know what I don't ladies miss about and gentlemen, Texas? come on down. Yeah, you know what I, I? This is what I don't miss about Texas: going outside. At one o'clock in the morning, and it's still ninety percent humidity, and it's still eighty-eight fucking degrees. Yeah, one o'clock in the morning. Well, Acapulco was like that too. God damn. It was the humidity. The humidity is always worse at night because, believe yeah. it or not, <clears throat> the sun is what helps keep it at bay, keeps it up in the atmosphere as opposed to down at ground level. Yeah, one o'clock in the morning. It's just like misty and like you, you literally chew every breath. Yep. You have to chew the air. It's so sick. Yep. It's crazy. Well, number 40 in the books, Yona. Yeah. I hate to end it on such a heavy note there, but uh, and it hurts me in the heart, you know, but uh well, I, I know that um, there's just so many people that, that constantly inspire me and, and spur me on to uh, keep getting off my ass and, and to do more. So um, it's all I got. And as always, folks, remember, um, independent thought is the way to go. Which totally get stuck says to me going down. Yeah. Take care and blessings to everyone. Yeah, I second enough. that. You want to learn all the ends forever. Woohoo! To Pay find attention. out more, fuck around. That's right. Pay attention to everything. Make up your own damn mind. 
Don't let anybody else tell you what to do. That's what we do. We'll see Fuck you next we week. Ball. That's right. Shit, we'll see you tomorrow night for open lines. How about that? Glad.